This plant has teeth. Well, they are hair-like teeth. They're not used for piercing or chewing, but they really are used for killing. This is the death trap leaf of the carnivorous plant, Saracenia purpurea, also known as the purple pitcher plant. This here is just one leaf. It's dried, so it lost most of its color. In the U.S., this plant is fairly rare. It's even protected in some states. But here in Quebec, it's abundant in the soggy wetlands north and east of Montreal. It lives in what are often called blanket peat bogs. These are wetlands where the topsoil is made of harsh, acidic peat, partly decomposed plant material that's actually flammable if you dry it out. In blanket bogs like we have in Canada, peat soil is mostly made of decomposing peat moss. Each new peat moss generation grows on top of its dead ancestors. Individuals tangle and interlock, forming an almost completely sealed blanket. It reminds me of interlocking phospholipids in a cell membrane. Back to our little death traps. Purpurea typically have anywhere between 3 to 20 leaves per plant. Each leaf participates in photosynthesis. It transforms sunlight and CO2 into sugar, as you would expect a normal plant to do. But unlike normal plants, Saracenia must kill to get its fix of nitrogen, phosphate, and other compounds that are difficult to find in acidic bog soil. Down here in my basement, I've got my little microscope here. And I was thinking, it would be fun to take a look at these teeth, these trichomes, as they're called. They're actually just, they're modified plant hairs. Lots of plants have hairs on their leaves, right? These ones are specially modified. They point downward and into the trap. So if a bug is crawling on here, it'll step on those hairs and slip in and it will drown. It's a lot like, remember there's that monster in Star Wars in the, in the desert? It's a big like sand trap with all the teeth that are pointing downwards. It'd be cool to look at these teeth under the microscope, but first, I've got something better planned for us. Let's actually go out into the wilderness and find this species living in the wild and see how it does its thing. This is, this is bog territory, bog entrance territory. Right now we are walking through the woods to an ancient wild bog, one that is slated to eventually become farmland. Most likely this bog will be used in cranberry production, but for now, my friends and I have permission from the surrounding landowners to explore this area before it's gone. Under our feet, we've got peat. <laughs> That's how you know you're entering the bog. It's very dry right now, but the ground is getting squishier. Here is the first wet ground and a little mushroom. If I'm actually able to find pitcher plants, and assuming some look strong enough to survive me taking a leaf, I do have permission to grab a few leaves. We could empty them out, maybe even dissect one if need be, to see exactly how these little death traps function. All right, it's cleared up. We're definitely in deep bog territory. We are in the bog. The air here has a it's kind of a musky, maybe earthy smell to it. There are lots of bugs, some really nice spiders. Let's see if we can find some pitcher plants. This right here, this one little branch sticking out of the peat moss with the tiny little leaves on it, that is a wild cranberry. Look at it. It's those little tiny leaves and those berries there. This strain, obviously, the wild strain, obviously not very uh not very big. Those are about half a centimeter long, those berries. So you breed them and you get them to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you take land like this, you take in a bunch of backhoes, a bunch of machinery, you destroy everything. <laughs> All these little ecosystems. And then you plant the you plant the cranberries that you want to eat, that you want to sell, rather. And Make a bunch of money. Some more little berries there. It's amazing what we can do for a little bit of tart sauce on Thanksgiving. We are a powerful species. Here's some, uh, yeah, 
puffy bog balls. Weird. I found some! It has been about two hours now, but I finally found it. My first little cluster for the day. But when you find one pitcher plant... Pitcher plants everywhere. Over here. Beautiful specimen. Over here we got some little baby ones. Well, the leaves. Baby leaves. Little death traps. There's a tiny one. So cute. And they really retain that water. I mean, they're because there's not water this high, right? But they are just really really buried in this peat moss here. These are alive as well. And it's very wet down here. I mean, it's a super dry day, but you know, an inch or so into the peat moss and it is just wet in there. I mean, I don't know their development stages. I can't tell if this one's new or old. I think it aborted holding the branches yeah inside. well uh there's a patch right there mm. look <laughs> they're just they're everywhere this one's not as is health oh but that yeah that leaf is really healthy right there got dead ones half dead ones oh this is a really nice one nice new one little baby one. That's cool. Yeah. I... <laughs> it's interesting. It looks like some things eat their way out. Looks crew dying in here. These plants grow beautiful flowers, but I've never been out here when they happen to be in bloom. I do have this clip from a previous trip, though. The snow had just melted, and we found a really nice dried flower from the year before. Here we got the dried flowers, and then down at the base, you've got the carnivorous oh. leaves. So those are not the flowers? No. No, those are the leaves. The flowers are up here. Dead. I wonder what they look like. Yeah, they, they want to keep the flowers away from their death trap because they're trying to oh, pollinate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay, back to the current trip. By the end of the day, I had found almost a dozen clusters. Despite the battle scars, several plants did seem strong enough to survive me taking a leaf. So again, with permission from local landowners, I did pluck a few. My guess is that you, just like me, really want to know what's inside this pitcher plant. If so, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon because in episode two, I take you on a deep dive, even under the microscope. It's amazing what we find inside there. All sorts of different organisms. But for now, let's look at those teeth. I promised you teeth. And that, my friends, is what pitcher plant teeth look like underneath a microscope. Big thanks to Simon and Alan for all those trips out in the bog.